name is Maxima. Yes, this is my birth name. In Latin, it means miracle worker, and in Hebrew, it means great mother. I was born in San Francisco and lived in the Bay Area most of my life. At a young age, I had a light encounter. While alone in my room, white light filled my room. I tried to move my motionless body, but it felt like a brick was on my chest holding me down. I couldn't breathe. As soon as I prayed to God for help, the light disappeared. Little did I know that the light would revisit me every two to three years. Family, friends, and physicians were not able to help me, so I was always fearful of the light. At one point, traveling was part of my job. Therefore, when I was alone in my hotel room, I would turn on all the lights, television, and radio just to lull me to sleep. At the age of 40, someone suggested that I should finally go through the light. I decided to go through the light but learned during my journey of healing that the light stayed within in order for me to honor the heavenly light that heals all things. My light experience has taught me to be fearless, to appreciate all things, and that everything is a blessing. The healing energy when practiced from the heart brings forth healings for all things. Being blessed to meet those who are enlightened as myself and who help others towards enlightenment, I must tell you our stories. Now, there are so many flavors of enlightenment, as you know, Maxima. Mm -hmm. So many flavors, and it's absolutely the delight. It's the coming thing on our world to not only have more and more people enlightened, but to notice how very individual it is. Thank 
Kawai Ola Kane Having a compassion for Hawaiian language, culture, and hula, Kaea has enriched the lives of our keiki as a kumu with Keikula Oi Hunui Kai Malino, Hawaiian language immersion school for the past 15 years. She's also a lecturer at the University of Hawaii Center at West Hawaii Community College. Currently, Kaea joined the morning team with Jazz in January of 2011 and is now the content and brand manager for Kappa Hawaiian FM. She continues to spread her knowledge and passion for Hawaiian culture and language by keeping Kappa active in the community, helping to perpetuate the Hawaiian culture. Kaea has had the blessing of traveling throughout the world and the mainland, sharing her aloha through hula. Through over 25 years of study, she has become an alakai with the award-winning halau naleo aholoku under the direction of kumuhula nani lem yep and lealoha amina. Kaea continues her desire to humbly serve others while strengthening and nurturing cultural identity by enriching community relationships through education Hawaiian culture and language. My journey for the love of hula, I believe, started in the womb of my mother. I love to use hula in a way to connect with people, whether it's teaching them a basic step or understanding of translation for song. I have a passion for Hawaiian language. So before we even start with hula, it's really having a respect for it, understanding the language. So it's really understanding what the composer spoke of and the emotions and environment the composer was in. So teaching hula or understanding hula, what I'm able to share with anyone, is really coming, the pers coming from the perspective of the composer and what those emotions felt like and what the environment looked like. Hula has been something that I've always come back to when things got tough. When the spirit feels empty or the spirit needs healing, once the music starts or once the chanting starts, it's like it's being revived. So I know personally that Hula heals um, through so many difficult times. In my personal life, Hula has been that connection. I think the most difficult thing was not being able to Hula. That felt like I couldn't breathe. It was a very different feeling. Um, I've watched several of my hula sisters and their journey and it's a it's amazing when i'm with these group of women and no matter what's going on in our lives as soon as we come together there's an energy between these core women that brings such a peace where there's a trust that um that feels so good. There's a trust of, of light and reflection that everything is gonna be okay. And this bond really has been established because of Kula. So yes, Kula heals. You know, when I was a child, I didn't think, I didn't know anything different. Kula is just a part of you. It's not like a sport, and this is kind of funny with my children is hula is not a sport, it's a way of life. The journey has been amazing. I think one of the most um, memorable experiences was I was about nine years old and I sat in front of the TV in the living room and I told my dad, one day, and the Mary Monarch was on, and I said, Daddy, one day, I wanna be on that stage. And we did little shows here and there and when I was 15 years old, 
I had the opportunity for the first time to dance on the Mary Monarch stage. And I was dancing with a core group of women that I looked up to. And I was the youngest that first year with the ladies of Naleo Kuholukun, both of my Kumu, Kumu Nani Lem Yap and Kumu Le Aloha Amina. And I remember stepping on the stage and looking up at all the lights and remembering that moment I had in the living room, watching it from the TV, <laughs> realizing that it's happening right now. It's happening. So I think through my journey of hula, that was one memorable experience where I was watching something as a little girl and then it came true soon after. But whenever there is a time to come together and hula with my hula sisters, every moment is an experience. Every moment something happens for growth or someone is touched or someone is healed. It's every moment. But as far as a memory, I would say Mary Monarch. <laughs> I think for many of us, trials and tribulations take different forms. Um, one of, I think one of the first times in my life that I've ever, as, as a woman, I would say was when I was um, pregnant, I was hapai with my daughter. And at the time I was hapai with my daughter, I, was, I found out that my mother was dying of cancer. And I spent the year caring for her along with my sisters and having this amazing experience of closure, I would say, the last days of her life. Through that loss, after giving birth to my daughter, three months later, my mother passed. Then a few years later, my father passed. So, when I reflect, I think loss in my family has been, has been one of the biggest trials. And I'm, I don't, I mean, I don't think I'm that old, but I think the loss that I've experienced has taken um, just even more recently from um, my brother, after my father, my brother, my only brother. Um, soon after that, um, my nephew just recently, two years ago. So the loss of family, then my sister, the sis, my, another one of my sisters died of cancer in 2011. And in 2012, you know, so the trials keep happening, but the 2012, I think the most recent loss that has, I guess, has looked different or felt different is the loss of my best friend. She was there for, like a sister, for the birth of my children. She cared for all of them, for both of them. And knowing that um, our hula lives were connected and that when we stood in a line, she might not be, she wasn't gonna be there again. I think that was the biggest, out of the many, there were many, but most recently, this one just seems to be a little bit more difficult. So I guess loss, loss has been, has been um, a growing experience for me to be able to really dig deep. The only time that I feel that I am whole, where I can actually, that healing feeling or that peaceful feeling subsides all of that is when I'm dancing. When I'm dancing, especially now, especially now, it looks different today, like right at this minute, like today's experience. It doesn't matter who's watching. It doesn't matter who my audience is. It feels like, um, I joke around about how all my picos are lined up and it's just me letting go. And everything that's on the inside is expressed without words because I talk for a living. So people expect my words. People expect that from me. 
when I'm able to express without talking, that is the most unbelievable feeling. Unbelievable feeling. Because there's no words. So you have to feel. And um, so through trial and tribulation, um, hula has been what I've come back to day after day. It really feels when I don't, when I can't hula or I'm not able to, it feels like I can't breathe. <laughs> I mean, it's it just, it's a weird feeling. Um, but I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful that I have that opportunity to connect. And I believe that maybe not everybody can hula or has the opportunity to hula, but I know that hula is a vehicle that I use to connect. And I know how healing it is for me that if everybody just stopped and found what they connect to, whether it's the ocean, whether it's the mountain, whether it's an activity, a healthy activity to connect, because then we'll stop looking. We'll stop looking. And looking to connect is one thing because the intention is there, good positive intention. When I have the opportunity to share with someone, a lot of the time, if it's a hula experience, or we're talking about songs that we're going to experience through hula, in the beginning, I really like to see, I know it sounds funny, but I like to see that there's this confusion of like, what? Okay, wait, okay, what? And then when we start going through it and the process of walking one through connecting before we get to the hula like I mentioned before you watch them stop and have to think you help them really shut all the doors so they can bring them back to center before anything can be taught it's really bringing one back to center that is exciting when I watch a student a friend a colleague connect first through my sharing and that there's that sense of peace that I talked about. There's this peace so that the teaching can now begin. Again, it comes back to that foundation of aloha. When we can really line up and be in alignment, I can't put my emotions into the student or I can't, I wish I could sometimes make them feel what I feel but what I can help them do is connect and help them line up and get that feeling and once they feel that once they feel that feeling they'll always want to come back to it they'll always want to come back to it because it's that sense of peace it's that sense of peace so the hula experience or the song that we're going to experience is at a whole different level and they get the full experience i always call it being a hundred percent in the moment how many of us are ever 100 percent in the moment i'm sitting here with you and i have to make sure that nothing else is in my head many of us can't do that and Today, we pay millions of dollars for other people to tell us how to be that way again when it used to be normal. And now, once we have that opportunity to connect, and when I see that in, in, in working with someone, there's a sense of joy that I know, that I feel because of what they're experiencing. And I know that no matter what, they're gonna wanna come back to that place again. And the more they practice, and the more they practice, the, no, the more it becomes the norm. When I'm dancing, it's that feeling of nobody's watching. I live in a fishbowl. And even though performing for others, it's like the same thing. It's important that um, that I have that opportunity to connect. So I dance like nobody's watching. And because my job is really speaking, it's a time where I can just be me. And there's no judgment. There's absolutely no judgment. And what I'm thinking is this, 
this is me. People have expectations and they think that, oh, well, you're on the radio or you're on this or you do that. And there's all these expectations. But when I'm dancing, it feels like my mind, body, and spirit are one. And it's something that nobody can take away from me. And nobody can judge me on that. And um, there's this feeling of uh, of peace. And every time I'm done, or every time the song is complete, my spirit is so refreshed and re-energized that at times I think I have to make sure that I have more of those moments and not let my busy schedule get in the way of those experiences. So when I'm able to give that to them or be used as a vehicle to share that, it is the most unbelievable feeling. That to me is the ultimate when I'm able to share that. One of the things that I like about this journey at this time right now is the fact that I've been blessed with my children. I never thought that I would have children. And after being blessed with these two, the blessing really is to know that I've been able to touch or I've been used, I would say. I've listened and I was able to touch people around the world through dance and now through the gift of speaking. But to know that I have um, offspring <laughs> that will have the opportunity to continue the legacy. And it will look different. It does look different. But yeah, these two are um, very two special personalities, two different characters. They're, about, they're exactly a year apart. So they're very close. With AJ, this is AJ. Hi, my name is AJ. And I'm 10 years old and I go to the Elmer Camarino. Hello, oh, I'm going to the Elmer Camarino. And AJ loves to be outside, he has a passion. I see my passion, what I feel, I see that in him when he's outside with his animals. It looks different through him. And I watch how he cares, how he, how he feels when he's outdoor on the, outdoors on the ranch or when he's connected to his animals. So I know that his journey and that peaceful feeling he's connected to already. Um, one day, it's going to be uh, connected with hula. <laughs> it will be. It's in his pico, I know it is. But he's the seventh generation Paniolo in his papa's ohana. And so it's really important um, to even watch that legacy continue and to see that it's really in the spirit and the DNA of his being. My name is Kael, I'm 11 years old, and I go to Kekula o Ekne Kamina. O Kael ko u inoa he uikumakahi o umakahi ki a hele o Kekula o Ekne Kamina. For Kael, the importance of who she is. I watch her grow, and, and it's funny because a lot of her mannerisms or the way she reacts really is me. And who did you get your name from? Uh, my grandma. <laughs> Which grandma? So, Kaea comes from mommy mm -hmm. and my grandmother, very Kaea Kohone. And Kalala comes from Ama Sally and Kapua Nani from Auntie Lois, Akao. One of the important things with Kaea when she was born, um, she, she, um, she was born during a time where her grand aunt was passing and her grandmother was passing. So my mother and her father's um, auntie, who was like his mother, was passing and they were both sick at the same time. So when 
we found out that she was going to be a girl, she really carries both of their names. And what is beautiful is that they both have a compassion for serving others. And if there's anything in my life that I hope that is instilled in both of them, is that of sacrifice to give to and serve others more than themselves. I think that's the most important thing in my legacy, or these two. Love 